morning, everyone. And it's been absolutely a fantastic program from day one. And I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to give this talk, uh, especially Dr. Banshi Sahu, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, and all the others as well. So I'll be focusing on an element, a particular disorder, which is uh, reaching epidemic proportions in our country, type 2 diabetes in the young in India. And for all practical purposes, I'm going to be sticking to when I say young, perhaps a little less than 30 years of age. So this is the schema of my talk. I'll be covering a bit about the epidemiology of the condition, focusing a little bit of the local epidemiology of the condition where I am in Tamil Nadu and Velo, uh, the understanding of the risk factors, the differential diagnosis, and delineating the therapy. So uh, this by far is the most comprehensive study which looks at the global burden of disease of diabetes in the country. And of course, you can see the hotspots in 2016 in terms of three states which have been highlighted, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Punjab. Having said that, it may be a little more difficult to figure out what the prevalence of type 2 diabetes in uh, young is in India. But if you look very carefully at the graphs that have been done over here, the red one, which is 2016, and the blue, which is 2019, and we can focus by approximate calculations looking at these two graphs, that perhaps the quantum of type 2 diabetes below the age of uh, 25 years was around 2.3%, and around 2,40,000 2, at that point of time. And this is approaching approximately around 1.1 million cases at this point of time, and we're talking about young patients with type 2 diabetes. Of course, there is a group which we may have to focus on, which may be other than type 2 diabetes, and of course, that is the important differential diagnosis that I will be talking about. So let's understand the risk factors as far as this condition is concerned. And big conditions which are considered as risk factors important, but I would like to talk about a few in particular. If you look at uh, ethnicity, there aren't too many studies in terms of differential ethnicity in young uh, children across the country as far as diabetes is concerned. And there is very little show that there, is a, there are differences in spite of the variable ethnicities in the country. Impaired glucose tolerance is important. Poor nutrition during pregnancy, uh, that is low birth weight or the Barker hypothesis. And of course, I'll talk about the psychological impact or allostasis as well. So this is a study from the United States of America, America showing very clearly that when you talk about young onset type 2 diabetes, there are huge differences between Native American Indians versus other populations or the white Caucasians and the Hispanics, etc. And you can see over here very clearly that there are very different uh, prevalences per 10,000 population. Having said this, there is no clear difference in the ethnic prevalence observed in children with type 2 diabetes in India. Uh, Pre-diabetes, the Milo in India is actually profound. And if you look at our Velo data from studies done more than 10 years ago, we can see quite clearly that even in the age group of 14 to 17 years, that impaired fasting glycemia was present in almost 20% of boys between the age of 14 to 17 with other features of the metabolic syndrome. This correlated also strongly with uh, the familial habitus. The mother over here, the weight circumference correlated very strongly with the child's uh, elements of the metabolic syndrome, including the waist circumference, the triglycerides, the stolic and diastolic blood pressure. And if both parents had the metabolic syndrome, uh, this had a significant effect on the child's metabolic syndrome being almost six times greater. And this included a very significant proportion of impaired fasting glycemia and impaired glucose tolerance at a young age. And this, of course, is an important precedent for type 2 diabetes in the young. When it comes to genetics, of course, there are a number of polymorphisms, but the one which we have studied quite a lot in the South Indian population around Velo is the FTO gene. And this showed a very strong correlation with impaired fasting glycemia, as well as the waste ratio in Indian adolescents uh, in our Tamil Nadu population. The prenatal or um, intrauterine factors, which are important, cannot be uh, crossed over. Uh, the impact of the Barker hypothesis uh, done by studies in our very own uh, 
a local cohort in Velo. We have done uh, comprehensive studies looking at hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamps, indirect calorimetry, and NMR spectroscopy looking at the micro quantities of fat as well. But what we found was actually the most simple of things. The DEXA scans, which we normally use for osteoporosis, showed a very profound uh, increase in the fat content, the visceral fat content, and also the superficial fat content was significantly more in the low birth weight group and compared to the, uh, the uh, normal birth weight group, which was done as a comparator. And you can see over here quite clearly that the lean mass was also reduced quite significantly in this group. And all these are precedents. This is around the age of around 18 to around 20. And these are important precedents for subsequently prostating insulin resistant and young onset type 2 diabetes. I shall talk about the concept of allostasis, which uh, very often is ignored and is thought about as a bit of mumbo jumbo and not something really very significant. But it's important to understand when we talk about stress, there is something called optimal stress. And if we exceed this optimal level, it leads to psychological breakdown. And there's a law of hormones which are responsible for this concept of allostasis. There's a non-adult allostasis scoring scale which is available. And these take into account several stress points. If you have a score of more than 300, you're at risk for an illness. And very often, this illness could very well be type 2 diabetes mellitus. A score of 150 to 200 means that the risk is moderate. So over here, I have listed a number of uh, uh, points which give scoring systems. For example, if a parent has died, the psychosocial or psychological stress is about 100 points. If there's a teenage pregnancy or a miscarriage, uh, it could be around an, an extra 100 points. Divorce of parents, about 90 points. And I think the points which, of course, this is a system which has been developed outside India and would obviously need revalidation and modification within our population. But I think the issues of talking about uh, elements like uh, school going and academic stress is something really important in our population. So you can see over here the top five points according to the Western scoring system. Now, what is the mechanism of allostasis? Essentially, what is, happens is a cortisol dysregulation, and there's a bidirectional link between stress, depression, and type 2 diabetes. So with chronic psychological stress, you can have stimulation of uh, cortisol production by the HP axis, uh, increased catecholamine production, and also inflammation. And all these three put together can lead to uh, the precipitation of type 2 diabetes in young people. We go next to the differential diagnosis. And uh, over here, we have a number of differentials which we should consider when we think about young people. So this is a very comprehensive list. Having said that, we would like to divide these individuals into those who are lean, those who have optimal body mass index, and those who are overweight. So the ones over here I put on the top, it's quite obvious that type 1 diabetes is a low. BMI disease by and large. Having said that, type 1 diabetes is the more com most common cause for young onset diabetes in the young population. Below the age of 20 in particular, type 1 diabetes is the most common cause. And that, therefore, is an important differential diagnosis for all diabetes at that age. We have the other causes, which I have highlighted in orange over here, Modi, ketosis-prone diabetes, which tends to shift a little to the left in the Asian Indian population and tends to occur very often below before the age of 30. Partial hyperdystrophy, which can very often be mistaken because they do not have to have a low BMI. Uh, they could very well have normal BMI and mitochondrial diabetes. And the others at the bottom are all lean phenotypes, therefore are less likely to be mixed up with type 2 diabetes. So very uh, this is a comprehensive list showing the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. But for practical purposes, besides body mass index and uh, the classical more fund or acute presentation of type 1 diabetes, which very often may not be the case, I would like to highlight the fact of differences between biochemistry and the C-peptide positivity in type 2 diabetes with mild elevation in the early phase versus C-peptide negativity or low C-peptide levels is an important marker even in the most 
remote or resource poor areas. And therefore, you take on the other measures, particularly the GAD antibodies, which are generally positive in about 80% of young onset diabetes with type 1 in Indians. Modi, I'm just highlighting this. Uh, we all know that it's a familial disorder with an autosomal inheritance pattern. But remember, we often talk about type 2 diabetes being associated with a parental history. And therefore, with inbreeding, etc., we could have a number of patients who have type 2 diabetes, and this could look very similar to Modi. We also know that Modi can present later on in life than what we had, would have expected, uh, maybe above the age of 25 or even 30 at times. So I would like to focus on these two things which could confuse us. Three-generation family history with sibling involvement could happen in type 2. Usually associated with a non-obese state when we talk about uh, Modi. But let's look at it from a different perspective. From our publication, which came out uh, half a decade back, we listed different causes of type of Modi. And we found that there were conditions, forms of Modi, which are different from the Western population. I'm highlighting the neuro D1 and the ABCC8 mutations. But let's look closer at the BMI column over here, which I'm pointing out. And you can see over here that there were patients who had classical Modi proven through pedigree charting and familial screening and in vitro studies that they had BMIs which are on the higher side. So Modi can present with higher BMIs. So it can be mixed up with type 2 diabetes at time. The difference, of course, is that Modi tends to have an intermediately low C-peptide level, whereas classical uh, type 2 diabetes has elevated C-peptide level. Ketosis prone diabetes. For the typical Western population, it's a later, later on, 35. But in the Indian population can start between the ages of 25 to 35, can be onset. And this was our first documented progressive series of follow up uh, between uh, one year initial onset comparing controls with classical GAD antibody positive uh, uh, type 1 diabetes versus those who were GAD antibody negative, and we found that the C peptide levels recovered in a period of one year's time. So this is an important differential as well. Uh, partial lipodystrophy, borderline low to borderline high BMI, elevated HOMA IR, elevated C peptide levels. Now, if you look at the first three points, they can be confused with type 2 diabetes. So therefore, the family history, a very close look at the morphology of the patient, Doing a DEXA scan to look at the distribution of fat is really very important. The upper part of the body may have more fat than the lower part. And therefore, this is, these are useful markers. And of course, ultimately, looking for the Lamin gene mutation is something which will help you prove the diagnosis. So this is the baseline algorithm, the tests that have been that would be done in a patient who has uh, young onset diabetes to differentiate type 1 from type 2 and the other forms which I have just described over here, which are mandated. And of course, genetic testing. Uh, in a quaternary care center like us, uh, so or maybe about three or four centers across the country to finally figure out genetic uh, testing and other results. So type 2 diabetes patients in the young are generally obese. So genetic cause for obesity in the young may be associated with diabetes and should be identified. This is looking at from the other perspective. You can have young people with uh, obesity who could be presenting with diabetes at the same time. But what you may fail to note is that they probably have something else as a cause for uh, diabetes. It's the obesity, which is a dominant condition over here. And because of the high prevalence of consanguinity and the paucity of genetic data in our morbidly uh, obese individuals, our group uh, has actually looked at this more recently with a 35 gene obesity panel. And uh, we have found that monogenic obesity can be about 16% mutations with young onset obesity. And these are some of the mutations which we have listed uh, over here. You can see on the right-hand side that there are typical syndromes which occur, retinitis pigmentosa, uh, mentally challenged state. Uh, and of course, consanguinity is very often present in these patients. Here is a patient with the classical features of the barrett beetle syndrome, obese, hypergentilism, small testis, uh, and uh, uh, retinitis pigmentosa at the same time. So these are the uh, heterozygotes. In fact, most of us think of autosomal recessive combining two heterozygotes or a compound heterozygote and you have the disorder. But that's the much more florid disorder. 
the milder cases coming a little later after the age of 20 without mentally challenged state without other features could very well be heterozygotes coming with milder disease but morbid obesity and this is these are the patients who could have diabetes at the same time and we need to rule out these genetic conditions if their bmis are more than 35 in particular so let's finally delineate therapy physical activity goes without saying but young people need to exercise harder because they are not at significant cardiovascular risk in most cases 60 minutes per day vigorous exercise with increased respiration and perspiration this is important to highlight to these young people reduce non academic screen time well easier easier said than done an academic screen time has gone up in the current uh, miller of things when it comes to covid-19 and that makes it even more of a problem but it's non academic screen time should be reduced to less than 2 hours per day delineate the allostatic score score it look around for psychosocial issues which might hit the patient and ensure psychiatric help and counseling if required extremely important and foundational dietary advice once again cut down on calories i'm not going to go through this in great detail but this is once again in the adolescent age group very difficult to perform needs a lot of motivation uh, to actually get it done starting first therapeutically bigonides in young children with type 2 diabetes all if not all should be started on metformin 500 mg once a day and slowly increased over a period of time to prevent intolerance glitazone surprisingly have a major role one would think that using glitazones would cause a weight gain but in the today's study it has been clearly shown that when you use a glitazone in combination with metformin the glycemic durability the decline of the beta cell function is delayed having said that there was treatment failure almost 50% in the metformin group and about 38% in the combination group telling you that beta cell decline is more rapid in type 2 diabetes patients in the young here is the today study and looking at uh, other studies and combined and uh, comparing them with adopt uh, and uk pds studies and the change in beta cell function which is much more profound in young people with their decline sulfonylurea can also help uh, there is a good study with uh, compa comparing lumipride versus metformin there is no doubt that the sulfonylureas are powerful medications and over here you can see that there was an a1c improvement with uh, glimipride when compared to metformin in this head to head comparison of sulfonylureas versus bigonides finally ligaraglutide in the ellips study which is published last year in the new england journal of medicine uh, it is we know that ligaraglutide when added on to metformin can actually have a profound effect in adults but in children as well it can have a profound effect having said that the gi symptoms the gastrointestinal symptoms can be fairly uh, intense it's recommended that you can go up to about 1.8 mg safely in these children having said that one has to be cautious to prevent the gi adverse effects and once again highlighting the fact that a more rapid decline in beta cell function compared to type 2 diabetes in adults is something which is seen and about 50% require insulin in about 10 years so in summary let my end me end by saying type 2 diabetes in the young in india is an emerging problem of importance besides suboptimal activity and poor diet maternal gdm maternal malnutrition and allostasis are of paramount importance rule out type 1 diabetes modi partial lipodystrophy very difficult to rule out at times and syndromic obesity as important differentials besides lifestyle changes psychological counseling metformin thiazolidine dione sulfonylureas and loraglutide all play a role uh let the knowledge our team of researchers clinicians uh, lab people as well the genetic lab as well as a number of residents and nurse educators who have helped us with our work thank you very much for your patient listening